Welcome to another face-stomping, power-bombing, hip-hopping episode of What Happened, the show that tries to make sense of the abject anarchy of the video game and movie industries, which always seem to be at their very max. With that subtle segue behind us, allow me to introduce you to Platinum Games' very first online multiplayer title, which sadly also doubles as their least played title. Wait, wait, hang on, did we all just forget that Soul Cresta came out, huh? Yeah, anyway, Anarchy Reigns, or Max Anarchy when in Japan, has to be one of their oddest experiments, a narrative sequel to 2009's Mad World that features the same universe, characters, and gameplay mechanics, but billed as a multiplayer-centric affair. It only released on the consoles where Mad World didn't, saw several big delays, and had a confusing release schedule along with some palpable friction between both studio and publisher. So grab your tires, stop signs, and chainsaws. It's time to find out what happened to Anarchy Reigns. Jack, just Jack. It goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Platinum made a splash when they and Sega announced their ambitious partnership in 2008. The industry hadn't seen anything like this since the infamous Capcom 5 reveal several years earlier, which is very much not a coincidence since both reveals involved many of the same game developers. The initial Sega announcement was comprised of three games, Bayonetta for the PS3 and 360, Mad World for the Wii, and of course, Infinite Space for the DS, which everyone tends to forget. The relevant title here is of course Mad World, a high contrast, blood-soaked death match with timeless 2000s era attitude. At least he didn't feel anything. Except for that fucking train hitting him at 120 miles an hour. Despite a modest amount of hype and marketing, the story of Jack Kamen didn't really entice the average Wii owner at the time, with sales data putting it at less than 100,000 copies sold across North America and Japan, most likely because the average Wii owner would have needed their parents' permission to buy it. <laughs> We jokes in 2022, people. Sega's Mike Hayes stated later in 2010 that critically it got a lot of acclaim, but commercially it wasn't the success we wanted it to be. Clearly that was a mismatch with the Wii audience, particularly in terms of the amount of cross-ownership between Wii and the other home platforms. If you're going to play a mature rated game, you're going to get your 360, PC, or PS3 out to do so. But you can't knock us for having a go. Platinum and Sega will continue to work together on Shinji Mikami's Vanquish and today's subject, Anarchy Reigns, which was scheduled to release in 2011, less than a year after its announcement, worldwide wide on both the PS3 and 360. Bullshit. Bullshit. Now, it's actually rather important that this was the fifth collaboration between both companies. Why? Well, I'll tell you. I spoke to a source who's familiar with the matter and they informed me that the initial contract between Platinum and Sega was only for their first four games, and after that their dealings would transition to a more game-by-game -game basis. Unfortunately, none of those first four collabs were the hits they were looking for, not even Bayonetta, which was still their most successful game at that time. So it wasn't really in Sega's best interest to re-up that initial contract. According to my source, that contract was really, really good, but strictly in Platinum's favor. They had almost complete freedom in making their games as they saw fit, and once they were happy with them, it was Sega's job to just shut their mouths and print the discs. So, uh, Eroki Rain marked a um, new phase of their relationship, one which gave Sega far more authority. Platinum, however, loved what they had created with Mad World, a bunch of bounty hunters running around in hyper-violent contests, styling on each other, and talking shit in equal measure. That's so Platinum. But even my source expressed that the team realized that the Wii was not the best place to grow such a franchise, so they decided to migrate over to the HD platforms this time around. As you can imagine though, this presented its own unique challenges. From a marketing perspective,
perspective, it wouldn't exactly be wise to release Mad World 2 on machines that had no Mad World 1. And Sega was very, yeah, no thanks. In regards to porting and publishing it again after it had floundered at retail initially, so the compromise was making a semi-sequel spin-off that placed emphasis on multiplayer, which I think in hindsight wasn't much of a better idea. Regardless, Platinum mentioned how they had received a lot of requests from fans for a multiplayer game, and it just so happened that Mad World's eclectic cast of characters was a great starting point. Masaki Yamanaka, lead character designer on Mad World and now director on Anarchy Reigns, detailed just how quickly the project came together in a blog post on Platinum's website. Thanks to Oni Dino over on Twitter for the translation work here. We wanted to design a game that would be just as exciting as fighting games were when they were first introduced to the world. With that in mind, we hit the ground running on development. We used Platinum Games' forte, 3D action combat, as a foundation, added in mind games found in the 1v1 fighting genre, and incorporated some FPS-like strategy aspects that online gamers love. We started with a working prototype on PC by reusing the characters from Mad World. We threw them in square-shaped arenas, and were pretty surprised at how enjoyable it instantly was. He wasn't kidding when they say they reuse Mad World characters. As you see, in these teeny tiny screenshots here, they literally dropped in Jack's old black and white model. As to why that same unique art style wasn't carried over into Anarchy Reigns, my source said that it was felt that the Sin City-esque look was an element that had held back Mad World. Y you know, the th the thing that made it unique. This wasn't a sentiment that came from Platinum, mind you, but Sega. Since they were running the show now, the decision was made to go for a more traditional color scheme. But to be fair, having to parse all the information from a 12-player online deathmatch with only three colors might have been a bit much. When the game was first shown at the start of 2011, it was already looking far along, but the inevitable complications that would arise from a team developing their first online focus game would make that autumn release date look less and less likely. As Platinum were figuring out the flow of how matches in Anarchy Reigns played out, they ran into design issues they hadn't encountered in their previous games, as multiplayer presents unique problems you don't see in single player. Yamanaka had a lot of interesting insight to share when it came to these problems. We design our single player game so you feel pretty badass after doing just one move, but in PvP, the other player has the same capabilities. This means the more powerful we make the players, the more chaotic the battles get in terms of speed. We identified problems as development went on, like players clumping together in one area, or a third party swooping in and stealing a kill from out of nowhere. Anticipating this, we conceived the idea of action trigger events, and incorporated an AI that would control these events to scatter players about or bring them together. Despite these issues, Yamanaka said they eventually turned a corner on most of them. Figuring out all these design problems would see the game getting its first delay by slipping to January 2012. But then, just a month before that, Sega of America's Gary Knight stated, Anarchy Reigns brings a new take to the brawler genre and we've decided to take a little more time to deliver the full knockout punch. I can't reveal much now, but it's something to do with scale. Let's just say traditional one-on-one -on -one or two versus two fighters will be a thing of the past. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. That's a pretty massive delay for a game that was just about to release. What happened there? According to my source, Platinum just needed more time to work out the kinks of the online experience, as apparently very few members of the team had ever shipped a game or online with such a prominent feature. Staff also tried to lobby management to let them develop fully featured multiplayer lobbies, but these requests fell on deaf ears at both Platinum and Sega alike, which was unfortunately still a common attitude towards online play at that time. Coupled with that, designing your first multiplayer game to be a 12-player competitive brawler was never going to be easy, just based on the genre alone. Ensuring that connections remained consistent and reliable while a dozen detailed 3D characters were smacking each other around in multi-tiered environments is like a lot, and the modest staff and budget Anarchy Reigns had certainly 
certainly didn't help matters. In fact, a lot of Platinum's workforce were starting to be allocated towards other projects, like Metal Gear Rising and the wonderful 101, so Platinum turned to frequent collaborator Value Wave, you might remember them from our God Hand episode, to pitch in. Even with everyone putting in the hours though, many at the studio knew the online infrastructure just wasn't where it needed to be. Sega of America started to lose more and more faith in the game as a result, which came to a head that May, when the publisher announced that the Anarchy would reign in Japan as scheduled on July 5th, but that it no longer had a release date in North America. The fuck? Platinum uh, weren't especially jazzed about this, and rather than keep silent or toe the line with a generic, please look forward to future announcements, they reached out to fans, saying, We worked really hard to make sure everybody could get the game on time. The game is fully localized. If you buy the Japanese version, or any version, it's going to have all the languages in it. We really wanted everybody online around the world to play together at the same time, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. In the West, Sega is looking for the best time to put it out. It will still be out in July in Japan. There will still be ways for you to get it if you know where to go. We're still 100% behind the game and we still want to connect with you and play with you and have a good time. So let's make sure that happens no matter what bad news we get. Sega didn't even officially comment on all of this until a month later via their Twitter, where they announced that both the NA and European versions were now releasing in 2013. The reason? No reason at all, actually. The release of Anarchy Reigns has been reevaluated. We now expect to launch in Europe and America in Q1 of 2013. This came as a shock to Platinum, and especially their CEO, Atsushi Inaba, who reacted to the news in a series of tweets. Hi, all. I wanted to make an official comment on the Western release of Anarchy Reigns, known as Max Anarchy in Japan. First of all, we are done with all international versions of Anarchy Reigns. The delay is not due to further development on the game. Also, even though the release dates will be different, the content of both the Japanese and Western versions will be 100% the same. Today's Q1 2013 release news was the first we'd heard of it. Even if we wanted to, we can't comment as we're still in the dark officially. There's some concern that this will push back the Japanese release date. It will not. The game will be released in Japan on July 5th, 2012. Finally, I want to sincerely apologize to all the fans worldwide for all the confusion this situation has caused. Though we are the game's developers, we can only do so much about this. However, we hope you can continue to support Anarchy Reigns and look forward to playing it with us in the future. Thank you. So if Platinum were done, like even the localizations, why did everyone else in the world have to wait a further six months? My source indicated that Sega of America and Europe just didn't view the game as a priority, and its expectations of success were low. Real low. And given the retail reaction to Mad World, it may have been understandably low. So they had looked at their calendar year and felt that the traditionally dead month of January would be the most ideal grave in which to dump the game. Now, if you know anything about most Platinum fans, you'd be aware that one of the best ways to describe them would be rabid. If one of their newest games works on any console regardless of the territory, since it was made to be region free, why wait half a year? Many went to the import website Du Jour, which saw their most hardcore fans playing it that very summer. But when the dead month of January finally rolled around, it turned out that it wasn't that dead. Sega had set Anarchy Reign's release date one week before Capcom's DMC reboot was set to debut, and just a few weeks after that, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, also by Platinum, would Zendatsu fans' wallets as well. What does Zendatsu mean? It means cut and take. 
Maybe to level that playing field, Sega decided that the game was probably an easier sell at the budget price of $29.99, but it's more likely they just had zero faith in it. Cause that's like, that's some Spyborg shit right there. Lamentably, neither this nor a Bayonetta DLC code being included with new copies of the game outside of Japan helped to get the butts in seats. The online play could still be very stuttery and unreliable, but if you could get a smooth match going, players found a frantic battlefield filled with sick characters and a very engaging but accessible combat system. Fortunately, Platinum was wise enough to offer a single-player story mode as well, and while it was obviously made very frugally, repurposing all the multiplayer maps, it had a large amount of cutscenes and some very sharp character dialogue. Critics were pretty split on the mode though, with some feeling it was a valiant attempt that added to the package, while others saw it as a repetitive slog. Maybe part of the reason it was looked on rather harshly was that for many, it was the only mode they could really play. Since it was difficult to even connect to games, both before and after launch. Oh, and there was no split-screen multiplayer option as an alternative. One thing most critics and fans did agree on was Platinum's choice of music, another outstanding soundtrack filled with some super hot hip-hop bangers. So you can stick around cause it's gonna be a thriller in this world, ain't no other option for a killer, I just gotta get the cash, gotta get the all said, the game scored a 73 Metacritic average on the 360, the most reviewed platform, which is not a bad showing. But uh, this was the good part of its Western release because the sales were the uh, other part. I can't find any reliable numbers for North America or Europe, but in Japan, it only moved just a bit over 40,000 units across both platforms. My source wasn't privy to accurate worldwide numbers, but was sure they were between atrocious and really bad. Just going by the data I was able to sift through, in all likelihood, Anarchy Reigns actually sold even less than Mad World overall. So obviously, this is where Sega and Platinum's relationship was chainsawed in half because it's been nine years and this was their last game together. Sega passed on their option to publish sequels to Bayonetta with Nintendo picking up that ball, but they did at least put out two re-releases for their better performing Platinum collabs. If you're somehow hoping against hope for an Anarchy Reigns revival like I am, don't! My source said they'd be incredibly surprised if anyone on either side has ever expressed any interest, and even if there was, it would require far more logistical work than offline games like Bayo and Vanquish. While I think Platinum had an idea that was brimming with potential here, I think focusing more on local multiplayer or campaign co-op and being completely unrelated to Mad World would have been the safer choice because Sega, and frankly most mainstream consumers, seem to have very little interest in Jack Kamen and his Mad Mad World. That being said, it feels like a bit of a rookie mistake to make their first online game an ambitious one, but you only learn if you make a few mistakes. Now, in 2022, if Platinum were to tackle a persistent online action game, I'm sure they could produce a massive, industry-changing success that would be remembered by all. If you know of any other unfortunate action anomalies, let me know in the comments below, holler at your boy on Twitter, or enter the mad world that is the Flophouse VIP Patreon and become a big boss and nominate what you want to see coming up. See you next time and thanks for watching! There is nowhere to run to This ain't nothing like Kung Fu More like watch